yesterday Anthropic uh, released this blog post, Prompt Caching with Claude. Uh, yeah, I found it pretty interesting actually. So I thought I could just make a new video and some examples of how you can use this already. It's already in beta, so we had the chance to try it using the API. So I just want to read a few things here. I'm not going to go too deep into the documentation now. Uh, you can do that if you wanted to, right? But just, just uh, read a few lines here. So prompt caching, which enables developers to cache frequently used context between API calls, is now available on the Anthropic API. Uh, with prompt caching, customers can provide Claude with more background knowledge and uh, example outputs. We're going to test both of those today. Uh, all wide reducing costs up to 90% and latency up to 85% for long prompts. That is what I found most interesting, right? The latency part. Prompt caching is available today in public beta for Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, Cloud 3 Haiku, which support for Cloud 3 Opus coming soon. So for me, the Cloud 3 Opus part, at least the Cloud 3.5 Opus is gonna be the most interesting. Haiku is already pretty quick, Sonnet is pretty good latency too, but we always can have more latency uh, or lower latency, right? Uh, they have some ideas when to use prompt caching, prompt caching, conversational agent, coding assistance. Basically, you can use it for everything, right? Talk to books. We're going to do an example of books today. So as we show you how you can set that up. Uh, other than that, there are some price differences. So you can see uh, you can see we have some cost reduction in time here in this example. But if we scroll further down, you can see how we priced uh, cached prompts. So you can see a cache prompt are pricing are based on the number of input tokens you cache and how frequently you use that content. Writing to the cache is 25 more uh, more expensive than the base input token for having given model. So you can see in the input part here for Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, we pay $3 per million tokens. Uh, if you're going to cache that, you're going to pay 3.75, right? But we can make that up. You can see uh, while using cached content, it's significantly cheaper, only costing 10% of the input right so you can see a big difference here when we have cached our input that only costs us 0 0.30 millions per token so that's a dramatically lowered price when we have cached our input right and the output is gonna stay the same and uh, there are different prices for different models here right <laughs> look how cheap uh claw tree haiku gets and yeah, that's basically it for kind of the blog post I wanted to go through. Uh, before we take a look at the code and the examples I set up, let's take a quick look at the documentation. Just a few lines so you kind of get a more in-depth idea of how this works, right? So to actually use this, uh, we're going to use something called a cache control block. So we're just going to place this in the system here. You can see cache control uh, type ephemeral. I'm not quite sure about that, but we're going to place it down here. And here is kind of where we're going to put in what we want to cache, right? So you can see this is a full book they want to cache. And if you scroll further down here, you can see in this example, the entire text of Pride and Prejudice is cached using the cache control parameter. So yeah, that is pretty easy to set up, right? And if we scroll further down, I wanted to look at how prompt caching works. So when you send a request with the prompt caching enabled, the system checks if the prompt prefix is already cached, so that's smart. Uh, from a recent query, so we don't cache it every single time. Uh, I think it's like a five minute or something. If found, uh, it uses the cache version, reducing process time and cost. Otherwise, it processes the full prompt and caches the prefix for future use. So every time you add, let's say you add a second book, uh, that's going to be cached again, right? So this is especially useful for all prompt uh, with many examples. We're going to take a look at that. Large amount of context, yeah. Books, repetitive task, long-term multi-conversation, and you can see the cache has a five-minute lifetime refreshed each time the cached content is used. So there was a um, Q and A down here. Uh, I think it was, can you reset uh, the cache? Can you manually clear the cache? Uh, currently, there's no way to manually clear the cache. You have to wait uh, expire every fifth minute, right? Uh, I'm not gonna go into uh, some other things here. I don't think. Uh, because you can just read this yourself if you want to dive deeper in. Uh, but I kind of wanted to take a quick look at best practices here. So to optimize for prompt caching performance, uh, cache table, uh, reusable content like system instructions, background information, large context or frequent tool definitions is good to cache. Place cache content at the prompt beginning for best performance. Okay, that's interesting. Use cache breakpoints strategically to separate different cacheable prefix sections. And regular analyze cache hit rates and adjust your strategy as needed. So, of course, this is a beta feature. So, 
uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to play around with it. And uh, there are some other things here, some details, but uh, I think we're just gonna go into the examples. I'm gonna explain kind of how I set the Python code up. And we're gonna run the examples and see if we get an improvement. Okay, so this is the first example uh, I just wanted to show you. It's a very simple example, right? But uh, I thought it kind of displays uh, what uh, the prompting caching is doing uh, pretty well here. So we have a pretty standard um, Python script here. Uh, we have a uh, function to just open a file from our current working directory. Uh, we set our cloud API key uh, by using the .env, so I have an env file here with my API key. Uh, we want to time this, so I import a time, just to time how long uh, the, the response is the first time we run this without the caching, and the second time it's running when we have kind of cached our, yeah, in this case it's going to be like um, a prompt, right, or a book, right? Uh, so you can see we are on the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model. We are using the client beta prompt caching messages. So that is kind of a beta feature from Anthropic now. Uh, I'm not going to bother with max tokens because I'm going to request like a short summary. So that should be in reach, right? And you can see uh, we have an F string here that is just going to point to our full uh, book that is going to be and two, three. Uh, we have the F string here that is gonna kind of open our text uh, here. So it's gonna open our book.txt. And our book is gonna be Harry Potter's The Chamber of Secrets. So we're just gonna download this book. I've already done that. So you can see this book is in my text file here. Yeah, it's a big file, right? So this is the Harry Potter book. Uh, we're just gonna start with trying to write a short summary, then we can try to add maybe some uh, needle in a haystack or something and test that out. Uh, so let's just run this for the first time and I want to print out how many tokens we actually cache to. So let's see now. So if we head over to our terminal now and we just run this simple script, right? You should see it should take uh, a bit of a time the first uh, run now. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but we have the timer, so we will know, and we're going to see how many tokens we actually cached. So that's going to be pretty interesting, so I'll take you back when this is complete. Okay, so we have the summary here, so if I zoom in a bit now, you can see, here's a short summary of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the summary, that's fine, but you can see we cached 138,000 input tokens, right? Uh, and the execution time was 21 seconds. Okay, so we know that one. Uh, we cached 138,000 tokens. We used 21 seconds. So now let's set, uh, run the same request again. And now it's going to be see interesting to see how much time we save, right? Okay, so you can see that took 8 seconds. So that was a big difference, right? But now we didn't cache any input tokens because we already did that in the previous request, right? So yeah, we cut our time down to 8 seconds. So I gotta say, yeah, pretty interesting, right? Uh, so that's a big improvement. That's like a 300% improvement almost, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's try the needle in a haystack test and see if we can actually uh, execute that uh, with our book here. And to do that, uh, let's just go into our book here uh, file. Let's go just in the middle here somewhere. Around 6,000, I don't know. And just let me type in something here. So I just put in the best YouTube channel for practical AI programming is all about AI. Like and subscribe, right? So that is kind of in the middle of our book. So now let's go back to here. Uh, let's change out the input here a bit. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do like a different request here now. So I just changed this to what is the best YouTube channel for practical AI programming? How can you support it? Uh, I uh, added in like your helpful AI assistant. Uh, I also kind of changed this to you can support the channel by like and subscribing. And yeah, that was pretty much it. So what I'm interested in seeing now, since it's been over five minutes since the last time we kind of cached this. Uh, if you remember kind of the intro, we the cache uh, lifetime is like five minutes. So now I kind of expect that we have to cache everything again, uh, like the full book, plus the new added small tokens we have for our needle in a haystack test. Uh, so now let's head back to the terminal, right, and test it again and see if we can answer this query here now. Okay, so let's just run it again. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's gonna uh, cache uh, the full book 
again. Uh, that was pretty quick though. So, cashed input tokens, 138,000. Uh, that was a bit strange. 2.94 seconds. The best YouTube channel for practical AI programming is all about AI. Great. You can support the channel by liking and subscribing to their videos. Okay, nice. That was a bit strange, right? Let's try again. It's quite consistent, though. So now we didn't cash anything. I thought I would take longer time, but okay. Uh, I guess that's fine. That was pretty quick, though. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Uh, we found kind of the hidden. You can see this is a different answer now, right? Uh, so we kind of find we found our hidden sentence with the uh, YouTube channel part. That worked pretty good. Uh, it was pretty quick again. But uh, yeah, a bit strange this one. I couldn't 100% understand this. Uh, but we're just gonna leave it here for now because uh, I want to do one more example of this. And the next example I wanted to show is a bit different. So basically, here we have. Uh, this is from my YouTube agent uh, prompt. So these are 40 examples of comments I have made on my YouTube channel. So this data set was created so uh, some kind of YouTube AI agent can kind of copy my, yeah, my style of answering comments. So we have 41 examples here. Uh, this is of course not a big prompt. You could have of course use this every time. Uh, but it, it would be nice to cash it, right? Uh, like, I wouldn't really do that, but let's say you had hundreds of big examples, like instead of fine-tuning, you can kind of cash this. So now you can see you are an automated, automated YouTube comment AI that works for Chris. Your task is to answer user comment, use Chris's YouTube comment style. And here I kind of just open the file, prompt.txt, right? Just we look, want to be looked at. Uh, we have an f-string example of the comment style. We yeah pick, take in our style here. I guess we can just do new line, new line. I don't care. And we're gonna try to cache that right. And then we just type in a comment right. Uh, we're gonna try that. I'm not hundred percent if this works, but let's try it. And yeah, uh, I think that should be good. So let's try this now and see if it works. So let's clear this. And yeah, let's run it again. So hopefully this is gonna be pretty quick, I think, anyway. Uh, okay, so we cached 3,600 tokens, 3.22 seconds. Uh, and yeah, this is the answer. So hey, thanks a lot. If you become a member of the channel, uh, I will invite you to our community GitHub where all the code is. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, perfect. So this kind of used our example, right? Uh, so we can try to run it again, 3.22. Should be around the same. I don't think we save much here. So yeah, it was about the same. Uh, if you sign up a member, just send an email to my email address with your GitHub username and I will write you ASAP. Yeah, perfect. That worked great, to be honest. It kind of mimics my style from the examples we gave here. So we have 40 examples, right? Uh, let's say we have 500 examples. Then with this use case, uh, it's going to be pretty good. So since we can cache this, right? We don't have to send this in uh, and pay for a full prompt every single time since we already cached it and that's gonna save us money over a long time right so yeah this is a super interesting idea i think it's pretty cool that anthropic goes out with this caching i know google also had uh, a version of this but i haven't really tried it out yet uh, but this looks super promising and the use cases i thought about this was of course the one i have explained now uh, will it kind of challenge rag uh, I'm not quite sure. I guess it could be. It all depends on the price, right? And can you kind of cash? How much can you actually cash before it gets very expensive? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but for now, I think this is super interesting and I'm kind of excited to get lower latency, especially when, if we get the new, let's say we get the Claude Opus 3.5, right? That is a slower model than Sonnet. So maybe with Claude 3.5 Opus, this would be super helpful to kind of get that latency down, right? So we're going to watch out for that. We're going to test it out when the new models come out for Anthropic. And we're going to explore this more. So yeah, pretty cool initiative if you ask me. So yeah, that is kind of what I had today. Super cool trying out the new prompt caching here. Uh, I was pretty impressed, like I said. Uh, but yeah, I will be back soon. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And yeah, see you again probably on Sunday.